God save our gracious queen. Long live <laughs> our noble queen. God save oh. the queen. Send her victorious, happy oh. and glorious. Long to reign over us. God save the queen. And God save me, Will Perry, from these imbeciles who I find myself alongside. John Wilkin and Mark Sorry. Flanagan. Welcome to oh. Out of Your League. Why am I starting with the national anthem? No, Mark, not because you went to Buckingham Palace once, but because this is a GB Lions special. It's quite a narcissistic national anthem, that, isn't it? <laughs> it really the is, queen. actually. Isn't Do you it? know what I'm saying? Mm. And it goes mm. on for about half an know, hour, that song. Just, it's all about her, isn't it? Mm. God. Why are we trying to save her? What are we saving her from? Exactly. Herself? What is God, what are we, what is God <laughs> saving the Queen from? <laughs> Let's Mark, <laughs> I've never thought, I've never did, thought of it. I, mean, you went I, don't think, I don't think of a lot. You went to Buckingham Palace, didn't you? I did. How much access did you get? We sort of did you slip away. Um, well, Daddy got an MBE, didn't he? Last yeah. year, so he met Charles, and we just sat in the little audience and watched. Pretty boring, really, but it was quite, you a, quite sneak a proud off moment. And head into you know Philip's, no, no, Philip's lots, chambers. No, no, lot of security. What happens in Philip's chambers? Mm. Spears no. everywhere. Mm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nope. That's not going to make it. <laughs> um, we are recording every Monday from the 12th of August after the grand final, up until the grand final, I should say. Um, you can subscribe via iTunes, or what's iTunes called now? Apple Podcasts, I think it's called. Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts, you can watch us on YouTube as well. This was recorded last week because of transfer deadline day, uh, which has been pretty dull over the last few years. And our stunning guest... Stunning. Stunning. Mm. Uh, very fashionable. Very man. fashionable. Very fashionable. Not quite sure what John Wilkin makes of that cap, but we'll speak about that later. Well, why would you? Um, you the know Wigan what? centre, Oliver <laughs> Gildart. <laughs> is, are, we, are you Oliver or are you Ollie? Um, Gilly, isn't it? Gilly's a Gilly. nickname, yeah. But Gilly. What's your real um, name? Patrick. Oh, good. Stevie Ward was Ray. Strong. Mm. I'm not feeling that. Not feeling no, that. No. 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 Ray Charles, that's pretty cool. Anyway, um, you, we're talking about transfer deadline day. Jim you Ray could have Bond. been involved in transfer deadline day. That's the point I of get time. hammered for this. You played for Everton. Yeah. When How was... good were you? Is this one of them where you played for well, Everton? Everyone, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or no, did you, you went to a trial? Matty Smith. Yeah, he, Matty Smith yeah. played for Everton. No, but <laughs> genuinely, I, uh, I played for Newton Lee Willows, which is a team in, in Warrington football, and we had a trial game against Everton, and then I kind of got scouted. Played there for about a year. Um, and to be honest, I just got really upset with it even when I was I was only 11 years old they were signing like kids from Africa and I'd have been like this big and you're coming up against these six foot lads yeah. who were developed yeah and I just fell out of the, like the love with the game really so what year was this, this we, we can't we can't blame Rob Elston for this when he was the CEO <laughs> at Everton no he didn't oh, scout I, you. I don't know when it'd have been no yeah, a while I ago I couldn't tell you yeah, when I was 11 position? I was centre mid so oh, so yeah. controlling things. Yeah. Yeah. Were you with anyone there that's gone on to make it, Premier League? Nobody, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, the class not of 97. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. Nobody, not one person made Nobody it. Made um, so yeah, my, my younger brother, he, he was playing rugby at the time and I kind of just, was fo I just followed him really. Mm. Started training him with his sessions and then went into my own age and yeah, yeah, here I am today playing rugby. Because your dad was a really good player for Wigan, and he was a centre as well, was he? Centre, yeah. and then he ended up in the back row. He's a bit slower than me, so... Right. <laughs> um, yeah, he never pushed me to play rugby or anything. It was kind of my younger brother, really. Yeah. Um, just kind of followed his footsteps, and my dad coached me growing up, and I think he just takes a step back now and enjoys but, it. As a but it was a big passion football for you, was it, as a kid? Yeah, it was massive. I was kind of like David Beckham, used to copy all his haircuts. Uh, he had the mullet, the, the skinhead. Um, yeah, obviously a big Man United fan, so it was my, my main dream was to be a footballer and kind of got took away from me with confidence, really, I mm -hmm. think. And then I found I was okay at rugby, so uh, kind of... Confidence is in what? You just, you yeah, good, just felt uh, you weren't good enough. In, in my football team at, with the other lads at, at Newton Willows, I'd like to say I was in the, the top, one of the top players. Um, and then when you go to likes of Everton, you're playing with all the top, top players in the, the world it was back then, yeah. so... So even you at 11, you accepted at that yeah, age? Yeah, I soon really, I'll just, my confidence gone. I've like, really gone with it, yeah. Isn't that yeah, sad? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? We're exposing, like, I mean, I'm assuming it's still happening. Yeah. But that's sad that we're exposing. That's the world of that level of football, isn't it? Obviously, yeah. I, was young, I was a young lad then, so, I, yeah. which probably didn't help. But, yeah, but did, you, just, did you not have anyone telling you, like, Ollie, do you know what? You might, yeah, you like, might a lot of my, co my coaches said, just stick at it, you know, you're a really good player. Yeah. Um, and, and then I, I just found the love for rugby, really. And, 
Yeah, I just really enjoyed my rugby. You I, I find a lot of rugby league teams are filled with frustrated footballers. Mm. So I played football as a kid, wasn't good enough, but they said, oh, you might be able to make a career out of rugby rather than getting a real did you, job. Did you have any trials, Mark? I had trials for Man City. Did yeah. you? Didn't go well. They were in the second division. They were still a big club. <laughs> yeah. that no, still a big still club. Still But when we get the football out of training, everyone runs around with more enthusiasm than when the rugby ball is. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. true. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Every week, everyone yeah. loves Same it. Same as the then. cricketers, isn't it? Yeah. Before a game. Yeah. Bear start breaking Are you good at football? Yeah, really good. Really good, Arsenal, big time. Arsenal fan. Uh, Arsenal. Once playing at school, and um, a guy said to me, "You should, yeah, uh, you should you be never play this game you again." Be professional. Like, yeah. so, uh, Get I'm a weird a... shaped ball and <laughs> piss off. I'm not a professional, mate. Well, you should be. Yeah. That's what he said. <laughs> um, you mentioned David Beckham, Manchester United pin-up model, yeah. great guy. Yeah. Everyone wants to be like David Beckham. Yeah, you're you're actually friends with another Manchester United pin-up in Phil Jones. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 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 Some might say. Yeah. yeah no, yeah, I actually the, met the him in Manchester. The Beckham of the, the, the noughties. Yeah, I met him in Manchester in a club. Um, what club? I thought you were actually mates, you just met him in a club. No, I did just for a club, really, <laughs> and we've stayed mates from then. Uh, Lola Lohan, Dean's Get Locks, is it? Right. Oh, okay. I, uh, Solid. What was your chat-up line? What, who, came, who came to who? Before I was at the bar, and he's good friends with a lad who's from West Orton, similar to where, where I live, and yeah. he ended up saying, oh, I won, I won a bet on you a few weeks ago, and I was a bit starstruck, obviously a big, big Man United fan. Kind of just said, right, let's go and have a beer, took me into this VIP booth, and that night I went watching GEZ at a concert, yeah. and... Um, I was sat down with Phil just having a beer and next some bloke comes and sit next to me and it was Jeezy the rapper and I was just like what is going on here wow. I'm in the and he was mate and he just he, he know he was just in the VIP bit right. there, was, there was a few footballers in uh, I think Delhi Alley was in John Stones so I was like a little kid really trying to trying to keep keep it cool yeah. um, you're a big Jeezy fan aren't you John big time <laughs> <laughs> I love Jeezy big time yeah and, so and kind you of stay mate mates, mates ever yeah since. He, he really enjoys his rugby he's, he's a bit of a Wigan fan so does he yeah he, he comes watching when he can and um, I'll go watching United when I can. Because Michael Carrick's a Wigan fan. Isn't yeah, he? Michael Carrick, um, Ryan Giggs, I think as well. Really? Yeah. They just rock up and, and watch you. Yeah, a few of them's been to the club and give us a few talks. So. Okay. If you think of that, it's that we're talking about Wigan of the nineties and dom how dominant Wigan yeah. of the nineties we've talked about in the past. Well, that's like almost a, a, a yeah. relic of that. You know, yeah, yeah. Ryan Giggs is a fan due to that era yeah. of the, the the game. You know, where yeah. if we got into the, you know, that, that main public sphere. Well, Ryan Giggs' dad played, didn't he? He did. He played well, with old Terry Flanagan at Swinton. You see, this uh, yeah, Danny Wilson was a good player, his, his a, dad, yeah. A very interesting thing that I think to talk about here is, um, with both you guys, is when your father is a sportsman and he played at a top level, like, how is that as an experience? Um, what are the challenges? Do you know, is it, yeah. is it always, like, was it a great role model or, 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 or are there challenges to it as well? Um, I think for me, yeah, just a great role model. He's never been one of the pushy dads you see at some amateur games who are screaming on the touch lines. He, he's never been that dad. He, uh, he kind of just took it, his role as a coach and, and guided me. Not, not too much, but just in, in little ways. And um, yeah, he's, he's been really good for me, my dad. I think he's been a massive part of my career. And like I said, I think he really enjoys now having to just set, step back, sit in the stands and, and watch me kind of do my own thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he's been great for me. Really, like a, a really massive role model. Yeah. The same for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm really close to my dad, and he was a great role model for me. Um, being from Oldham in the '80s, he was like the, the captain and the star player. So coming through as a young kid, I was always known as Terry's son, which can go two ways. Still I think. are, really. I still am, probably. Yeah. But um, it can go two ways. You can either go into your shell, or because I've always been quite competitive. That's been a bit of a, a, a push for me and a motivation to try and make my own name in the game. Um, and like I said, I've seen other players who, who've, who've, or former players who've had sons and they kind of shy away from it. Was, it, it was a bit of a motivator for me. And yeah. I think it's quite ironic yeah. that we both play the same positions as our dads. Yeah. I was probably not big or athletic enough to play anywhere else rather than be a, just a, a grafting loose forward, which he, he probably was. And you probably value the same traits that like your role model would have. And that's, yeah. I mean, You'd have played centre same as you, yeah, so you yeah. probably kind of follow those traits as yeah, well. Yeah, you, you you emulate. You, yeah, your dad, your dad's your hero, isn't he? So yeah, you know you try and emulate him. Well, yeah. I just find that interesting. Is it yeah. genetic? Well, know? genetically, I get hammered for it because my dad's six foot four, big lad. <laughs> I, I'm just well, I'm five eleven, but we say six foot. Shoes on. Yeah, yeah we, so we, you're not we, six foot. Yeah, five well, eleven. we boots. I'm six foot. I say. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> same, well, as, same, same as Wilkin. Same as Wilkin. Yeah, yeah. six so, foot. Your boots. One hundred eighty-five centimeters. You can, you can, yeah, you can dive. You can translate it centimeters. That doesn't mean you're six foot. So I get hammered for it. All the boys saying, "God, you're nothing like your dad." Mm. Like Lewis Tini, one of my best mates, is obviously Jason Robinson's his dad, and 
he has a genetic speed. He, he eats pizza, but he's absolutely rigged up. It's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, he's passed on his genetics for definitely. So I'm, I'm finding this dynamic fascinating because I'm going to be honest with you, Gilly. Gilly. Doesn't feel right, yeah. does it? Me calling you that. I mean, only two minutes. Darts. Oliver. Darts. Um, I like darts. So darts. Wilkins, darts. you know, being very gentle. How well do you know John? Have you met him a few times before? Yeah, a few times. A few times. Yeah. 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 Um, so. One, he hates sleeves, tattoo sleeves. Like he oh, makes man. a point of saying I despise <laughs> I him. Uh, the fact, and I, and I think, look, I think you look cool. Thanks. Dolce and Gabbana t-shirt, D squared cap. You are the person that John Wilkin hates. hates. No, I don't. No. And he's trying no. to, to. No, what you're saying is, 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 his style is the opposite of mine. Is what you're saying. <laughs> Hatred. Hatred is such. That's such a strong word. And yeah. if, chose if you didn't know Ollie, you saw him down the street. You would. You would. <laughs> would you think I'd judge him because of yes, that? Yes. <laughs> no. Mark? It's just not my taste. I'm, I'm not getting involved. It doesn't. It doesn't mean. <laughs> look. If it, it, look, that, it's a nice tattoo. Keep going. It's a nice. It's tattoo. a nice tattoo. <laughs> it's a nice tattoo. It'd be worse if we had a tribal. I think. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Are they still a thing? Tribal tattoo. Of course, yeah. I think not sure Wigan no now. Wigan, goes Wigan, out of way to get Wigan is it's the Wigan style. You're not cruel really. unless you've <laughs> got a tribal. Yeah. Yeah. If you're a doorman, you've got a tribal. Yeah, the definitely. rectum of Wigan. I think when lads in the last year of high school get a tribal and they can see it through the white shirt and that's class. Class. everyone thinks you're the man, but soon, <laughs> yeah. you soon realise that's not maybe the case. That's, maybe they're going to go full circle and tribals are going to be back in. And people are like, why have I covered up this amazing <laughs> tribal tattoo yeah. with all these ships and skulls <laughs> and clocks yeah, yeah. I'm not you sure got a ship or a skull or a clock on no, that no, no, talk us through them quickly um, kind of this is the guild art crest so I kind of started with that and nice uh, I've got like Italian relatives so I've got a, a coat on my arm they're in Italian um, Patrick the classic Italian middle name <laughs> <laughs> and then Patrick. Patricio yeah, kinda, went for the, the and what about you Will have you got any tattoos I've got a few tattoos I've got what your you name like tattooed on my ass. wow do you want to see it um, yeah, let's let's go for it. Go on, man. Can we do that? Is it? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I can't do that. I'd never, go, I'd never work again. Um, yeah, 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 <laughs> do you think I'd get your name tattooed on my ass? It does actually. I thought. <laughs> um, to all this talk of football, you played at the new camp. Yeah, that I was did, pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, r- amazing uh, experience. Uh, I think it was be- better than Wembley for me. Yeah, I think. It was it was half full when we played, and it was still an unbelievable atmosphere. So I, mm. I can't imagine what it's like. You know. Being Barcelona every week and running out to, mm. you know, the full stadium—it just kind of everything feels on top of you—and mm. um, yeah, unbelievable experience. And ama- amazing for you guys, but also amazing for the Catalan players yeah. and fans to give them what's going on in yeah, yeah. That they, part they, of the they world. got a really good following. They, you know, they, it was really impressive, and I think the, the kit they had as well was special. Yeah, I, I kind of wanted to swap shirts with someone, but no one would do it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, amazing. And we got hammered, and it was kind of put a bit of a downer on everything. But I managed to score, so that was kind of. My positive to take out. You scored in the new camp. Yeah, you're a messy. Yeah, you're no, messy. Yeah, I'm a messy. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, when you you finished the football experience, obviously your confidence is at like an yeah. all-time low. Or you, or you felt as though you'd fallen out of love with the game. It yeah. sort of not treated you particularly well. Obviously, you, your dad playing at a high level was it just a really natural progression into rugby league then, or yeah. did that take you some time to to come to that decision? No, I, th- I think I pretty took to it pretty quick. I've I've always been you know someone who plays every sport no matter what it is and, mm. and always been decent at whatever it had been and um, yeah I kind of took up rugby and, and got picked up from Wigan pretty early and that was similar to Everton where I got put in this system where you know it was brilliant and kind of at rugby I, I kind of stayed as one of the, the better players in the group and not I didn't fall off it um, so it kind of always motivated me to you know keep trying harder and get better and better and um, yeah managed to do all that. Is, is confidence massive for you? Yeah I think it yeah it definitely is I think like what you were saying with people comparing you to you know your dad um, when I started getting good at rugby it was like oh will he make it professional at Wigan or will he win what his dad's won and then similar thing where I kind of thought, kind of let that motivate me and think you know what I'm going to I'm going to turn professional I'm going to try and win trophies with Wigan mm-hmm. and uh, yeah it's managed to pay off me so far so yeah, I'm really because there's a period it. in your career there where I, f- I followed you as a younger player and, and you were sort of in and yeah. but not quite you, yeah, what yeah. I'm saying now um, is you an international centre? Yeah. You know, one of our best centres in, 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 in this country. But there's a period there where it wasn't, it's not, no. it wasn't certain you yeah. were going to like kick on, was it? No, it wasn't. So how did you deal with it? If confidence is a big thing for you, how did yeah. you deal with that period? Yeah, that, you're bang on with that. I kind of, I wanted the debut at Wigan and, and just to take on from there, but it didn't kind of go that route. I ended up going on loan to Salford to make my Super League debut. Mm. And I was thinking, I'm never going to play for Wigan at this point and I, I have so much respect for Salford as a club and 
Um, That's the nicest thing anyone said about Salford on this <laughs> podcast. No, I, I, I love Salford. I went there. It was, it was kind of all I've ever known is Wigan. And then when I went to Salford, it was something different. And they, they give me my Super League debut. And, and then, again, that picked me up from being, am I going to play Super League? So mm. I played now. I know what it's like. And I went back that year, made my debut for Wigan, and ended up playing in the grand final. So, like you said, with, with the confidence thing again, though, it, it, it did definitely you know, help me out. I think it's always the missing ingredient. Um, the film Moneyball, have, have, you, have you seen it? I watched yeah. it recently. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they talk about there's a scout talking, and oh, yeah. he's talking about he's got the build, he's got the. the, the, the but then when he gets his confidence, mm-hmm. you know, when, he's, when he establishes confidence, then we've got something. And for me, like in a young sporting career, confidence is, is everything. Yeah. And you get it from every, anywhere. You can get yeah, it from yeah. anywhere. You can get it from your parents. You can, you can get it from yourself. You get it from your teammates and environment that you go into. But ultimately, if you go into an environment and it drains your confidence, yeah. it, that can be the biggest single thing that, it, that stops a career going mm. anywhere. And I was interested watching you because, you know, I watched maybe the last two or three seasons where I've just seen it's just... It's going great, isn't it? Yeah. Like you've got to be delighted with how things yeah. are going. But I always remember back to that point where you were just, it, it was in between. Yeah, it was. And, and that, that interests me, that. How you then convert into becoming an international centre? Because you must be delighted with how things yeah, are going. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't have asked. I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't change a thing now looking mm-hmm. back. Um, obviously, with some of my best mates, George Williams, Joe Burgess, they kind of got the, the Wigan dream where they've come through the system, made the debut for Wigan. And, and that's the route. Back then, I wanted I wanted the perfect thing, and it, and it didn't work that way. But like I said, it's all paid out, you know, well for me now. Um, so that, that, that's why you know I've got a lot of respect for Salford, and I really appreciate the opportunity I got there. And um, yeah, and now obviously I played for England. It's, uh, I couldn't ask for any more, really. Nah, nah. Yeah. Well, cool. everyone has their own journeys as well, don't yeah, they? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing's like you've had a different journey. Everyone has their own yeah, journeys. Yeah. I think it's just mm-hmm. as long as you've got that belief and that confidence that you'll get there one day, whether hook or by crook, or whether it's you've had injury problems or selection problems, you'll get there in the end. That's. Yeah. I always find the best players are the most confident, mm-hmm. especially in in key positions. Like you look at Sean Longwoods. Mm-hmm. Some players could it could verge on arrogant, but. That belief and confidence is always like the key to success. You, you need to sport. develop a robust ego that yeah. is able to deal with, um, you know, sort of failure and able to deal with really sort of troubled times mm. and tough things. And when you're a kid, yeah. when you said about being 11, going into a sports club like Everton, you've not got any of that toolkit. No. Yeah. You haven't learned any of that. Mm. So like, how do you deal with that? And, and and those confidence rattles, you know, at the start of a junior career, and this is why I've got a lot of respect for it. But think about all the people who've been spat out and haven't bounced yeah. back in a different From sport. that point to get to where this guy is now, yeah. that's no mean feat, that. With, when you look at it where you, your dad was obviously a professional player, you know, the football stuff didn't go so well, and all of that, you put all that into like a computer and it would say, well, actually, it's probably not going to work out for this guy. Yeah, yeah. So it's massive. <clears throat> Were you always confident? Like I, know, I, yeah, I yeah. didn't know you was a young guy. No, no, I was, I was never that good as a kid. Well, when I was 15, 16, loads of other kid, lads in my team got picked up and I never did. But I used to just work really hard and had a really good attitude and I just kind of, I was so focused on what I wanted to do that I just, through hard work and just turning up all the time and, and like I said, belief and attitude, that's what got me there. But there was more, far more talented kids than me, but they didn't have the same belief or that work ethic that... And you would have been the same, yeah, I'd yeah. I just think some, uh, somewhere along your life, like whatever you do, you get rewarded for doing something well. And that point where you get rewarded mm. is like such a big moment in your life. Yeah. Because that point, you then want to recreate that behaviour. It's human conditioning. We want to recreate those successful behaviours. And at some point, somebody gave me some feedback that was like, wow, that was good. Mm. Well done, you know, mm. whatever it would be. And that's probably what... Inst- yeah. You know, then you yeah. want to do it again. You yeah. want praise. I think that, that's how I was. I always wanted to someone, you know, just going behind me saying, you know, well done, keep going there. It was, that was brilliant. And when I didn't get that, I'd be like, oh, am, I, am, I, am I doing things right here? Yeah. So you I, needed that. You needed yeah, someone I need, to reassure I was, you. Yeah, I needed that. Yeah. Um, do you still need that? No, now I'm, I'm a lot different. I think with the confidence thing, even when I started playing Super League, I'd be coming up against someone, I'd be doubting myself, going, oh, mm. is he going to embarrass me here? Um, with like Callum Watkins when I used to play against him, I used to I used to not sleep the night before the game thinking, mm-hmm. oh, is he gonna embarrass me on TV? Yeah. Mm. And I just think as the more games I played, I kind of thought, well, can I embarrass him now? Can I do something? What he's gonna worry about? And so I just think that comes as, yeah, just as a bold age. Yeah. I think I've just got miles better. Um, 
And when you become competent at something and you become better at it, yeah. then that that's naturally grows your confidence. Yeah. And, but and it, just it's only eleven years ago, he's only twenty two. Yeah. <laughs> I know, no, but what I'm saying yeah. is it interests me how you get there. Yeah. You know, I think a big one is just not always there. People aren't mm. always just confident. Maybe yeah. apart from you. Well. When when Ollie spoke then about that feedback and the, um, just getting some motivation and getting people valuing what they do. I think it's valuing the right things and valuing the effort or or just standing up to someone against a Callum Watkins, standing up yeah. to him or just going out there doing the best you can. I think sometimes they value the end product yeah. and then as you get older when you hit a bit of diversity you don't know and, uh, not diversity I hit a bit of uh, diversity you're a dance band you were a good <laughs> band actually <laughs> Ashley Banjo so we hit we, <laughs> what, weird he is so in we, diversity yeah. 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 pointless answer but there we go <laughs> we hit some bad times it's, it's valuing that effort that, that gets you there yeah this is um, a GB line special, and I, d- I didn't want to move it on because that was that was really interesting. But um, I want to talk before we. No, that was sounded sarcastic. It wasn't that interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll you let it all out, and we'll just start the GB line. Point. No, we won't. Um, but I, I do want to just quickly pick your brains on Wigan before we move on to to the Lions, yeah. the GB Lions. There it is. Um, it's been an interesting time for you guys because Sean Wayne going, yeah, Grand Final champions. Adrian Lamb coming in, the talk of Sean Edwards, which now isn't happening. It's been pretty mental, isn't it, the it's, last six months? It's been crazy, it really has. Um, as, a, as a club, as an individual, kind of the last year of, of only ever known Sean Wayne. So when, when he left, as well as, you know, like John Bateman, Sutty, Sam Tompkins, it was like going into pre-season, it was, it was weird. It was like moving to a different club. Mm. Um, and I think it took a while for people to understand Lammy and how he likes to approach a game. Uh, and we, we had a nightmare starting off. Um, but I'd like to think, you know, at this point in the year now, we're, we're getting some form together. Because he changed the style drastically. Yeah, it, it did change. Um, I think when he, everyone is, knows him for being, you know, a tough defender and, and being brutal, and we, we completely didn't have that at the start of the year. And we, we've got a few more personnel in, but I think we didn't train how we train with Wayne, it, with Lammy. Mm. It was, the sessions in preseason was brutal with Wayne. And, with Lammy had a different approach to it. If, if, if anything, we did more defence with Lammy, but not as much like brutality, I don't Contact. think. Did yeah. you change the structure of how you defended? And you, because that's yeah, something so, I heard was yeah, with more with like edges really. How we how we defend if we were stepping up or stepping back and whereabouts yeah. in the field. And like I said, for me, I've only ever known one way. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, it took me a while to adapt to it. I, and we was all, I think, individually, we was all on different levels. Yeah. yeah when we yeah. got tired. I'd fall back into how I know and yeah, Georgia yeah, fall back yeah. into how he knew. Sure. Um, but now I think we're a lot better as a, as a group. And if you look at Wigan as, a, as an example of um, Michael Maguire was then followed by Sean Wayne and, and Sean Wayne was his own man, like don't get yeah. me wrong, he did his own things. But yeah. Michael Maguire set a lot of these building blocks yeah, and a lot yeah. of the principles that Wigan followed for maybe whatever, you know, maybe eight, yeah. nine yeah. years it would have been were, were still the present, you know, mm-hmm. come the end. And Michael Maguire had put them in in 2010. 11 or something yeah. or, so that's such a long period where you subscribe into a certain style of rugby so actually as an outsider looking in you would think well it will take some time yeah. mm. but as we said you know shirts are not romantic or sentimental yeah. you know the shirt the Wigan shirt is demanding yeah. Yeah. but was that you know, was the short end you know this isn't me trying to get you to mug off the current coach he's now he's staying he's extended his contract hasn't yeah. he Adrian until yeah. 2020 yeah, yeah. but uh, when the Sean Edwards news came in that, I mean, that essentially is him rejecting rugby league, isn't it? That must have been a bit yeah. of a strange moment. It was weird. I think for me, it, it didn't really affect me at all. Mm. I, I think as, as players, you just wanted to know a bit of stability, who's going to be here. And the, it was a bit of a joke, wasn't it, really, to be honest. Um, we thought he'd signed and it, it wasn't. It was a handshake. So I, I didn't really read too much into it. I'd just kind of leave that to the people who you know, it's dealt with. But... Player, pl- I think players now appreciate we've got Lammy. Everybody knows what he's about, and mm. now we can, you know, build for the future. We've had made a couple of good signings for next year. Um, who's, what's come from Lammy? Pretty but, slightly more chilled out than Sean, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, well, I not. don't know. You know, I don't really. Yeah, mm. like when he was, he was brutal, but he was brutally honest. I think it. No, sorry, I meant Edwards. Oh, Edwards. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I'm not. Sure. I'm not sure. I, I'm. I'm happy with Lammy now. I think everybody understands him. And yeah, yeah. that would have been so them. hard for for players, though, I reckon, because you, you touched on it. Their stability and continuity is massive. Yeah. So if you go f- to go from Sean Wayne to then do a full season with Adrian Lamb, yeah. And if you, if they change the way you're playing, you're attacking defence, and then if he was to leave, and then Sean Edwards yeah. to come yeah, in and bring new, new methods in, if Sean that would have been so out. hard yeah, for, for sure. players to change in the space of th- three years, three yeah. different types of style of play. Yeah. 
Because we've seen it with, like we, we, we spoke about Leeds and how they've, you know, they've, their lack of stability over the last few years just means that they've not had that continuity on the field. And I think it's so important for coaches to be there for a long time. Yeah. And Saints have seen it with, with Justin Holbrook, haven't they? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. What talk is about this, the left edge for Wigan's doing great, isn't it? Like, yeah. it's got a bit of a reputation, yeah. hasn't it? Yeah, when yeah. I watch his play, I think, well, that's where, if you're going to score points here, yeah. like, I feel like that's your edge to. It, it, it to does, score. it gets a lot of attention. I think that's, it's not doing us any favours now, because yeah. I think as, as a team, because at some point we, we scored 22 tries out of 24 on the left edge. Yeah. So now it's got to, well, I don't know about now, but we had a part in the season where everyone was just like, send an extra number there, sprint at George, give him no time. As soon as I get the ball, jam me. Mm. And we, we kind of lost our mojo a bit and it was frustrating because we had a, a spell where we just kept scoring for fun. Mm. Is that try at Castleford where George, I think, tips to you early yeah. and then you step somebody and then yeah. he's supporting up the middle. And I was like, that's Wigan in a nutshell. That. If you could watch that clip and I was coaching against you, I'd be like, well, this is where yeah. the threat is, the, these guys. We, we just, like with me, George, Budge, we, we've grown up playing together. So it's mm. just like, we just go out every week and, and just love, love playing together. Yeah. Um, and when it pays off, it's brilliant. And we, we kind of had a spell where it didn't pay off and everyone was like, oh, this left edge has yeah. gone to shit now. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And, and we kind of had to realise a plan B. And I think we're, we're, getting that, we're getting that now. And hopefully the back end of the year we can get some form again last thing on Wigan you've got George Burgess joining in yeah. big sign in that isn't it massive great, great lad as well Mark yeah, isn't he? Good lad. great lad bloody good lad good friend of ours huge actually. head huge head they biggest, all have biggest big heads, head in the mm. NRL I think it was really initially, yeah. no I'm, I'm buzzing he's coming to be fair I've always played with a small pack At whatever team I've been in it's always been a small pack now we have probably the smallest forwards in the league and I think mm. just him coming towards he's going to add so much great for the league as well yeah. isn't it? to get you a know, name he's, like a, that. he's a superstar really yeah. isn't he I think it's great for us. And yeah. Looking forward to playing with him. How good is it to have the GB Lions back, everybody? Boy, look at this shirt. <laughs> don't, pretend, this. don't pretend like you've got any emotional connection oh, John, with that shirt. Stop being so negative. I'm not being negative, I'm being honest. Shut up. You. you have no... Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, Ollie, you want to say it again. what a shirt, firstly. Yeah, it's, it smells it's unbelievable. like something I can't say on the podcast, but it smells, it smells awful, it's but fun. it has been modelled by potentially... by. In fact, no, the one you no, had on was one. an XX it was, XL, wasn't it, on the photo shoot? Double XL, I wore it. Bit on you, wasn't it? It was a bit baggy, I'm pretty that, sure Alex Wormsley's won that one. He's <laughs> got his scent but, all over Firstly, it. well, answer that question. How good is it? How, how, as a question, how good is it to have the GB Lions back? Go on. How good is the shirt? Well, no, we'll talk about the shirt. It's great. It's well, yeah, no, it's shirt. amazing. Now, look, Great Britain for me is one of the, um, the reasons I played rugby league. I started playing rugby league. The brand really? of Great Britain. Yeah, for sure. Like watching, you know, the British Lions, you know, the, the, the British Cole brand, you know, that, that era. Who was your favourite um, player? My favourite player ever, controversially, was probably Joe Lydon, a fullback. Why controversial? Well, because I played for St. Helens for 16 years and he was a Wigan legend. <laughs> so He's sat next to another one now. Yeah, all Wigan legends. Mm. Mark's played for Wigan, not a legend. <laughs> yeah. God, so what are your iconic going? What do you? You're 22. Um, you're a lot older. So you, you obviously you remember. Yeah, I remember well, the 95 eight, Jonathan Davis try. Eight, like, yeah, yeah, what nine, do you remember? Nine, what are your nine, memories nine. of Lions? For me, was I went to the game. I'm sure, it was at Huddersfield. Uh, Sam Burgess. Yeah, put a big 2007, shot through, 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 through my I played in that game. Yeah, that was that's my standout. Um, yeah, that's the, when I think of the, the GB shirt, it just takes me back to being there and, and watching that tackle. Yeah, it was huge. Yeah, it was yeah. massive. Yeah, two So you, you played in that. What, what yeah, is it, the, to put on that shirt. It, it, yeah, it's mad because I have no the England shirt when we wore it. England would all, had always been the brand underneath Great Britain, so the England was essentially. I had an England cap before I played for Great Britain. Did you get an actual and, cap? Yes. Yeah. And the England cap was like essentially like a reserve competition. Mm. So England, for me, was always an inferior brand. And obviously, Sport England came in and funded you know, rugby league. And the reason we changed, for people who don't know, was that the Sport, Sport England quango set up by the government mm -hmm. was um, heavily investing in grassroots, but it had to be the England brand. And that's why we changed from Great Britain. To that's England. why we lost the GB Lions. Yeah, we, we, we lost the Great Britain brand and it was it was probably a commercial decision more more than anything but which is horrific really when you think well about it. it is and it isn't it's life isn't it you know if the funding's there and they think they probably weighed it up and and thought well what's the implications of us changing to england i'm sure some people thought that that was the right way to go but all the memories and the talking. iconic moments and, and mark's yeah, dad played on the you know, he did. how many tv lines tours did he go on just the i've one. seen the picture is it just one he's got yeah. he showed me his picture yeah, in his basement yeah, with shows brian noble yeah. and 1984 yeah Year I was born. Yeah, he he, um, he did all all Australia, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, and, and loved it. Yeah, it was yeah. great. There's so much heritage there. Yeah, and that's the thing with Great Britain. It's the tradition. 
and the, the memories that it evokes from you know the 80s and 90s when International Rugby League was probably in its heyday. Yeah. And like, like John said, that some of the memories and, and, and footage that you see now of the players that played then, they're, they're, they're mainstream memories, I think. There's, there's, there's not just rugby league fans that remember it, it's, it's sports fans. And, and we'd sell out Wembley on a, on a regular occasion for, for Great Britain matches. Now, I think now I, it'd be hard for me to say that England Rugby League International would, would fill Wembley now. No, no, I know it's a different sure. time, but having, having those memories of a full, yeah. a full, full Wembley taking on the, the Australian Kangaroos was, was, was the heyday of International mm. Rugby League. Yeah. So, so um, silly question, but why is it back? Why is it back? Because I think demand. I think um, in the court of public opinion, uh, England hasn't worked, or not hasn't worked, it's just there's an appetite for, for Great Britain. Mm -hmm. There was always talk of us having like tours, you know, the old school tours yeah. that are like six week tours again. And haven't worked, but they got to the final of the World Cup. Yeah, I was saying it, I think there's more affinity, more affinity to the Great Britain brand amongst supporters. Mm. I'd say that that would be true. You know, I'd say England <clears> is great, and I'm not knocking England or the achievements of the England squad. I'm just saying the Great Britain brand mm. for me is more synonymous with rugby league. And for people to get behind. Yeah, yeah, for sure. England rugby union has always been England rugby union. Mm. You know, the British Lions was always something on top of it, but British rugby league, English rugby league, has always been Great Britain. Mm. You know, and we, we sort of devolved it and had Ireland and Scotland and Wales. And I don't want to get into the fact that we don't play rugby union in Ireland because Tyron we, McCarthy. Tyron McCarthy hates Tyron it. McCarthy will get tweeting in again. Ollie hates it. He <laughs> <laughs> hates it. It's not even like a <laughs> He hates it. No, he doesn't. He just wants an adult conversation, which I'm more than willing yeah. to have. Uh, is, there enough <laughs> is there enough talent then? And I know it's all about, you know, the home nations and bringing the home nations together as a unity like that. But is there enough talent? Away from England to it doesn't matter to warrant it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's that's just an irrelevant. Eventually, potentially, yeah. I mean, yeah. Morgan Knowles is. But Welsh, at the moment, it's pretty yeah. much the, Morgan Knowles yeah. is well. She plays. Regan Grace yeah. is. Yeah. Morgan Knowles should be playing against. Percentage wise, what we got then? Just you know, England 90 percent England. No, but it, it doesn't matter. Well. No, I'm just what you're trying asking. to make is a headline about something. I'm just that asking. What Morgan Knowles playing for Great Britain is more important yeah. than it being called England and Ireland yeah. and Scotland and Wales. Yeah. So what we do want to know, this guy here in the D squared cap. <laughs> have you had, he's so, bringing the cap on. So, <laughs> so this starts. This this tour starts yep. against Tonga, 26th of October. Yep. Two games against New Zealand, finishing with a game against Papua New Guinea. Yep. You probably know that already because you've probably been given your schedule and so on. You're you're in the squad, aren't you? No, the squad's not been announced. You know you're um, in the squad already, don't you? Oh, genuinely. <laughs> I'd, I'd love to be in it. It's, it's a, like a goal. When is when's the squad announcement? I think it's like the week of the grand final. Yeah, but so. the week after. Yeah, but the, week, the yeah. first members will be announced yeah. the week before, and then they'll pick the guys who are fit after the GM. And what's the What's the process, Wilco? Is it going to be similar to when you? What do they do? Does I'll tell you my process. No, no. Me. But is there a phone call? How does it work? No, no. no this is what I'm going to say. Yeah. I don't so know. I'll tell you. <laughs> well, Mark could talk about. Is it England night selection? No, England night selection. There's an they email. Did? They just wrote out to everybody who plays rugby league. There's an email. There's just one response from Terry Flanagan. Can your son get a game? My son. <laughs> no, my, my, my first, the first time I realised I got picked for Great Britain is we've got Stan, Stan Wall at St. Helens is a kit man. He's old school, tiny old chap and he's sort of been around the club for years and he was the Great Britain kit man. Right. And I'd not spoken to Brian Noble at the time, who was the coach. I didn't have any inclination that I was going to be in the squad. Mm -hmm. And Stan said, oh, come round, I've got your kit bag. And I was like, what? He's like, oh, I've got your Great Britain kit bag. <laughs> he brought like, the secret. What? I was like, what? He goes, yeah, I've got your Great Britain kit bag. I was like, eh? Are you joking? He goes, no, no, come to my garage. So I drove around to his garage. <laughs> yeah, so he's got this garage in Lee. You know, he like winds his garage up. He's like 120 years old. He's like, right, right. He's got all the kit bags and he's got a Great Britain Lions got, kit, bag, yeah. kit bag with Wilkin on it. Bang, here, here you go. And I was like, it's good, holy though, isn't it? shit. Story, <laughs> holy shit. I mean, so Brian Noble rang me the day after. I was like, mate, I'm, I already know. Unless this is the world's cruelest joke. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine? Great. That'd be a great punk, wouldn't it? We'll, do, we'll, sell, we'll, we'll send one to Oliver. We'll get a kit bag oh. and we'll just post it out. Do you be slightly more professional these days? Yeah, I think Wayne, Bennett, think well, so. well, Wayne Bennett, I mean, in terms of England, does, does he call personally? One to uh, one? It's usually, call? well, with the England set up, uh, Jamie Peacock rang me uh, last year. Right. So I. I I'm guessing he'll do it, yeah. do it this year. We've had like a uh, squads, like 35 man squads mm. of England throughout the year, mm. and I think as the season ends, they're cutting it. They just cut it down again. I think the next one is a GB squad, mm. and then they'll cut it again. 
um, around the grand final time. So you've got to be confident there. I'm not trying to put. I'm not trying to I, I, mug I'd, you I'd up, but like to, the yeah, season yeah. you've had, you got to be in there. Yeah, I'd I'd, I'd be heartbroken if, if I didn't play. I think yeah. just because it's not been around for I don't know, twelve years maybe, um, and it might never come around again. I'm not sure. Yeah. So. And that's why this is exciting, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Really. You look at that, that's like genuine appetite to... I mean, don't get me wrong, there'd be a similar appetite if it was England, but the fact that it's new, yeah. it's, it's, this is a shirt that, that has been lost to the yeah. game. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's back. Like, that, 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 for me, this gets me excited. Yeah. That's my, like... That's what everything you aspired to as a kid. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like, that's... And, and the fact that that's come back around is like... It blows my mind. So I'm, I'm actually excited. This I've is me not even now, genuinely not even doing my research with it, but we've got 2019. So is there a 2023? Is this going to be a four yearly thing, or is it just going to play it by ear, see how this one goes? I don't know. It's down to. I right. mean, that, mm. wouldn't that be great if it became like a like yeah. a Lions rugby union yeah, like, four yearly? Yeah, thing? like it used like they used to be. I think yeah. we can get it around as often. Yeah, like like a four year thing, like you mm. said with the Lions. Um, just gives you something a goal to set, doesn't it? Yeah, so, we yeah. we had a great tour in uh, 2006 with with, uh, with Great Britain. It was un- unbelievable. I had the unfortunate pleasure of rooming with Sean Long for for six weeks. Mental. So Sean Long was in its peak of his like mad powers. Didn't he ruin stage. your passport? Yeah, he, he, well, <laughs> no, look, Sean Sean. I'm no, right. ruin. I mean, Sean Long had a when he went out and had a couple of beers. So we won the grand final, yeah. and then we went on tour. We we're in Australia, and I'm I'm rooming with him. And when Sean had a few beers. He, he, I think the polite way of putting it is he really struggled to find the toilet. <laughs> he was creative with his toilets. Number one or two? One. Number one. Um, so one of his, his uh, weapons of choice was the bedside drawer. Mm. So my passport was in there, oh, my, my phone, yeah. bear in mind, my wallet, every, all my valuables were in there. Yeah. Anyway, I opened it in the morning and there would have been maybe an inch of Sean Long's very dehydrated. <laughs> that's that's pretty sure that's phone. illegal, isn't it? To piss on the Queen's property it's an accident yeah, well no but what happened was if you ever do we on a passport not that I'm recommending you ever they're do they're laminated it. aren't they yeah but it's it, the old school one it puffed up like a shredded wheat right it was almost like became this baklava sort of Greek dessert passport <laughs> but I was like going through customs to New Zealand to Australia oh. and I just you know you know the gaps like that big and I was having to like force it down <laughs> force it down and push it through and then it puffed back up again and they were like thumbing the way through it and all I could think in my head is like like long he's long he's pissed off <laughs> I was like god I didn't have that but they let you through thing. customs they let me through and another one was we stayed at this beautiful hotel Manly Pacific hotel anybody who knows like Manly the front, yeah. it's amazing isn't it beautiful part of the world this hotel was like five star class and like I said long he had a bit of trouble in his younger years Finding the toilet, I'm, I'm, I'm informed well and truly that that's not the case now. Really, he's a very responsible coach. Only goes good the other way around, doesn't it? Good luck to him in rugby union, his new coaching job. Yeah. But this occasion, he, bladder function was an issue again, and he, not it wasn't the draw this time. It was it was the mattress, the bed, mm. and um, I remember going out for a run in the morning along the beach, and I was running back, and I could just see Sean Long naked, pulling his mattress out onto the balcony. <laughs> And he could just see this sort of, again, very dark, <laughs> orangey, yellow sort of stain in the middle. And he was just airing the mattress. Just trying to, <laughs> Letting it dry. Trying, just trying to let the, uh, let the urine evaporate over time. <laughs> I was like running and it's like beautiful five-star, amazing <laughs> balconies. You just see this, was this dreadlocks urine well? stained mattress just <laughs> popping out. Wow. Uh, that was a trip. That was. was a trip. Yeah. What a trip. I mean, tours in general, all of you guys... Um, there must be something else, wasn't they? Just getting away from the missus. I've never done one. I've only yeah. ever experienced. No, but I mean, even when you go away with Wigan on a tour. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we did the Wollongong trip a few years ago. Yeah. Uh, that, that was class. First time to Australia. Uh, loved it. Just changes things up. It's different. You, you learn a lot about, it. Yeah, you <laughs> as Wilco said, about your life. I think the game's changed. I don't think there's some mattress. Is it changed? Is it still? I don't know. There's a little bit. <laughs> there's a little bit. <laughs> I don't know. He's got some story. <laughs> Come on. Come on! One of, the, <laughs> one of the young lads did me. He did. Uh, we had like a little B day in the toilet, yeah. and he uh, he didn't do a number one, and he did the number two, and just let it let it linger out. Fester. Yeah. So when I come back in from training, it wasn't a pleasant um, I can't sight or smell. Yeah. Filled the room. Yeah. And he, he's renowned as one of the scruffiest, dirtiest lads in the team. So <laughs> what happened? But, but on a slightly more serious note, then on these tours, you you and I say you learn a lot about each other in such a good way. You must, you must, by the end of a tour like that, really know if you like them or not. And, yeah, you know, you or almost be forced to 
like yeah, each other. You are forced into each other's company, aren't you? Yeah. And, and like in the modern world, like we've all got our own little things going on and you can go to work and train with people, but you don't really know what it's like to live with someone. Mm-hmm. You know, you're living with someone for a period of time. It can, it can do two things. I've been in a squad where it's brought you closer. 2006 really brought like the squad closer. And then I think it was 2009, eight or nine, was, I can't remember. But there was half of the squad were Leeds and half were St. Helens, and it just didn't work. Yeah. Really? It was, it just it was didn't a massive work. rivalry that time. Yeah, wasn't well, we, we'd just been beaten by him in the grand final again. It's probably the fifth time on the trot or something, whatever. I don't know. I'm not that I think about that every night before I go to bed. Um, it just didn't work. The split in the squad was, was all wrong. Like, the balance of the squad is all wrong. I think Jamie Peacock touched on that when, when I come into my first England camp. He said yeah. they used to have. Wigan lads on this table, St. Helens lads here, yeah. Leeds here. Um, but when I got in, I'm close to Tommy Makinson and, and Luke Thompson. Um, Great lads. Yeah, both really good lads. And it was good to meet other players from Super League. And I think in that squad, everyone mingled together. And you yeah, know, yeah. hopefully, you know, it does does you justice. Because that, that was a big thing, you know, just making it back to football, which I know I'm guilty of sometimes. But that, that was a big thing, Frank wasn't Lampard. it? In, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but with, exactly, with the Chelsea, with the United, with the Liverpool yeah, players. And they didn't, they didn't spoke share about the, it. the secrets of, of what made them great. What's when they go on England camp, they just kind of keep a real closed book in yeah. terms of how they played and how they thought they should win. And I think you've just got to leave your ego at the door when, in takes, that respect. But it takes dead strong leadership to break that yeah. down, doesn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's got, well, look, like Wayne Bennett, I can imagine like guys like him, the team likes him, don't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah. Like he's a likeable guy. Yeah. Like, and he will be trying to break down. But did Nobby not do that for you guys then? Um, Nobby did to an extent. Um, But it was just such a big chasm. And what I would say is if this is unprofessional, like as far left as you can go and professionals as far right as you can go, but Leeds were over to the right and St. Helens at that time, we were like reckless Mm. and we were over to the left. And our ideas on how Saints at the time was we will play train, win, mm. but then we'll go out and have a pint together, we will we will celebrate our wins. Leeds was, it was more focused, more professional. It was like, well, let's have an ice bath, go to bed, and then we'll maybe, you know, do some... How, some how, how would Nobby have reacted to looking out of his window at the Manly Hotel, seeing Sean Long with... Well, he fell out dread, famously on that. Dread dread well, Sean Long came home, didn't he, after four weeks of the tour. Oh, that was that tour? Yeah, okay. he had a summit on said We Stained Mattress with Sean Long. Oh, really? Long. And so I was, it, did, it did cross the line, it did get too far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Sean had to leave the tour because of his, he fell out with, with, with Brian. Right. Not fell out with Brian, he, he was really missing his family. Right. He, he, he suffered terribly. You know, you say about how yeah. it can go well. Mm. Well, actually, being away from your family and a mm. young family, mm. like, for six weeks. And it's it was a different time then. FaceTime didn't exist. Mm. Like, texting was not really a... Th- you know, you text a bit, but yeah. I remember having to wait. And you know, there's no ring. Tinder, is there? Or Grinder? No, I don't know what they are. Am I? Yeah. Will, not, yeah, Will no, informs me on Grinder. Not sure yeah. about that. Yeah, good so, But it was a different time then. It's yeah. easier now. That, does, that, that, that yeah. won't that won't worry you. Will it being away from you? Got a missus, haven't oh, you? Yeah, won't worry you be, being away for that. Oh no, I can't. I can't. Well, can't wait. Can't, picked, <laughs> can't, can't wait to leave the missus. Yeah, no, just feel like the experience. I think big part of it would be in New Zealand, somewhere I've never been. Yeah, just lads. Who've been there have said it, you know, it's a beautiful place, one of the, one of the best places they've visited. So, just an experience for me, I, I love it. Mm. I'll FaceTime her now and again. Now it's and again, it's love. Yeah. It's love, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's it's love. Talk, <laughs> tell, us about the, um, tell us about the intensity of those games, because it's all, it's all well and good, you know, the selection, the kit, the given, being dished out your kit in some guy's garage. Um, you know, <laughs> eventually when you get there and you're in the hotel and you go through all that rigmarole of actually getting onto the pitch and getting down to business, what, what's the intensity like with? after all the build-up of a, of a tour? Yeah, it's, well, I think you've had such a long year by that stage. Like, your confidence is there. You've been selected for your country. Like, um, your form's there because you've been selected. Like, all of the, the bits are in place for you to go and perform well. Mm. It's actually a nice environment. You know, there's, there is, I suppose, um, the games are, are, are slightly quicker. You know, there's more, I think, historically more actions in a, in a test match mm. against Australia. I don't think there's any Super League game of match the number of I was going to say, does, does, can, you, can you compare it to the intensity of a grand final? No, no, it's, it's more intense. So the Four Nations final, I think it was in 2010 at Ellen Road, where we just got beat by Australia. And that was probably the most intense game I've ever played in. Really? Yeah, because it's just repetitive. There's not an inch to move. It doesn't, you know, there's not walking to scrum. So you can not, freeze? 
as a, as a not a freeze. I, don't, I, don't, I just don't think that's possible. You cannot perform. Yeah. That's for sure. But you're not going to freeze. You can't freeze at that level. Mm. A poor performance is resultant of a few your poor actions, really. Mm. And, well, I believe you're in control of those. It, it's a nice place to be at the end of the year, isn't it? Yeah. To pull an international show. Yeah, it's, I, I loved it. Um, again, it was a bit different for me. I was in the night squad, so I was setting myself for a trip to Papua New Guinea. Mm. Um, and then JP rang me, I think, the week of the semi-finals. I think Sam Burgess dropped out and he said, look, mate, you're in... You're in the England squad, and, uh, and did I you said, expect expect to play at that point? Did you no, think you'd just I, I, thought, be I thought I was gone. I was just happy going to Papua New Guinea and, yeah. and playing for the Knights. Um, I was happy. I thought I played. I had a good season. Yeah. I had hope that maybe I'd, I'd get my chance, but it weren't to be. So I, again, I just was focused on on the Papua New Guinea tour. And then he rang me. I was sprinted down the corridor, rang my mum and dad. Yeah. Mum and dad was crying their eyes out on the phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like it was a massive moment, and I think again this with the GB tour. I'd, you know, I'm, I'm praying I get in there. And well, I mean, I, I, I'll eat your hat if you're not in there. Has anyone, you know, that, that phrase, I'll eat your hat, has anyone actually eaten a hat? You know, do they, you know what someone said, like, I'll eat my hat. Has anyone actually made someone eat a hat? What would be the worst <laughs> hat to eat? I think that it'd would be, be pretty hard to eat that, that hat. <laughs> no, I think it'd be hard because the people. Well, I, um, a, um, a Mexican sombrero. Yeah, true. Yeah. But I, I fancy crusty. myself to make my way through it because it's strawy and a bit brittle. Would you melt it down? Would you drink it like a smoothie? It's a beef eaters hat, <laughs> very fairy. I mean, how would you eat that? That's you know, tough. It's not gonna be. It's gonna be pretty harsh on the gut. Mm. Boil it, make it soggy. Anyway, I'll eat your hat if you're not, <laughs> in, there, if you're not in the squad, <laughs> Mr. Gildart. Um, but how but how different will it be? Do you think being in there and being just in the England squad? And I, I, I don't mean that in the sense of that there's gonna be a lot of England players, but you've got Wayne Bennett, yep. you've got people around you that you know. From from being on tours with England anyway, yeah. it's just going to feel like an extended England squad, isn't it? Yeah, I'd like to think it would be. Um, there might be a few more lads, Sam Burgess, Gareth Widder, who will be in that squad. I think they're all back fit now, mm-hmm. so they're lads I've not been involved with. Um, and there's actually a, there's a nines tournament, England nines tournament, which is before the Great Britain tour, which I don't know if people like people know about. But yeah, yeah, yeah. and if you if you don't play in the you don't make the grand final, there's you're over in Sydney for two weeks playing, representing England in the Nines. Right. Um, which then, if you if you're playing that and you're lucky enough to stay in the GB, you're staying over there as well. So it, it's going to be two completely different squads. Yeah. If and and look, look, I, I, this is a this is a I think an interesting question that if you do say so yourself. Yeah, if I do say so myself, <laughs> this is going to be a great. Hang on, question. Will's got an interesting question. So, <laughs> do you think that this tour can? can capture the imagination of a nation as a collective nation and, and, I, and I say this and I'll, I'll, I'll say I'm not interested in netball but when England's netballers got to the final against Australia and the excuse me while John just pauses <laughs> beer it sounds a bit like Sean Long in 19 that is very similar 19, 19, 19 2008 uh, we're, in, we're in the Northern Monk by the way Northern Monk there's no there on the Dribble. front of it if you're He's wondering what that put dribble is um, fine establishment in the Northern Quarter Craftdale's um, nice good, tins good, good. as well nice tins very nice beer Ollie's staying away from them which is good to see um, John's at about but no, no back to a, back to a <laughs> semi-serious question can, can it capture that, that netball final I'm not interested but the, but the world was watching in those moments yeah. and uh, equally hockey alright on an Olympic stage so why then say the, uh, a, a tour like that after the, for the second match against New Zealand say they've lost the first yeah. can the nation not get behind rugby league and Great Britain in that sense I think it's awareness of the public to know that's going on. I, I watched that netball semi-final against New Zealand because I knew it was on. It was on loads of hoardings and advertising boards in cities and all over the, the press and the TV. So I watched it because of that and it opened my eyes to what, what was going no, on. But I mean, the, I mean, the final, the Commonwealth, when they won it against Australia, they're not the most recent one. You know, like mo- and equally that, but moments, that they are moments that the, the nation has got behind. Yeah, well, England you have to know GB. about it. So I yeah. think it's up to the press officer or the communications team at the, the RFL to, to put it out there and then so it's the lads to, to perform on the field. But mm. yeah. is it as simple as that? I mean, like, there's enough time, isn't there, to, to make people aware of this tour? But what I think it would be, people would be aware of it if it's successful. Mm. Like, for sure, people are going to watch it. Like, the, it will be part of the national sports agenda mm. if, if it goes well. Yeah. But England get to the final of the World Cup. That, that to me, seemed a moment that the world, the world, the, the nation should have yeah. been behind. It was. And it was. Yeah, it, it, was, was. it was. No, it absolutely Massively. was. Massively. So can we, we, can we recapture that? Crick, can, we recapture it? No, can we recapture that yeah. with the lines? Yeah, the yeah. Oh, I'd like to think so. Yeah, I think yeah. if, it, like we said, if it's, it's put out there and the media side is bang on, I think with me, I, I can't stand cricket, but 
I remember I was on Twitter and it was a cricket final. Everyone was hyping it up. So I yeah. thought, you know what, I'll put this on. Mm. Put it on and I loved it. Like, yeah, it's class. Yeah, so that's got me now. Not a, a diehard fan, but I think now I'll give cricket another go. And so I think if it's promoted right, why not? That, that's the importance of winning something internationally. And realistically, mm. well, not realistically, we haven't, have we? Yeah. <laughs> For a long, long time. Mm. And so when you win something, like Adam Peaty wins a medal, he, he, he breaks a world record that becomes really interesting to people. Mm -hmm. And for us, if we can, you know... Get over that line and then yeah, it can yeah, change yeah. things. Win yeah. a tournament. I'm talking about tournament, the World yeah. Cup. Yeah. Like, it's it's got one, to it? be yeah. our big aim. Yeah. But it's hard, it's hard to win a tour, isn't it, when you've got two matches against New Zealand, one against Tonga, one against Papua No, but it just starts the... the starts people, the people all identify with Great Britain more, mm. for sure. Yeah. If the tour looks great, it's a great build-up towards the World Cup. Yeah. And then really the game's focus has to be winning the World Cup. It's just unfortunate that the TV deal is signed, sealed and delivered prior to that World Cup. Yeah. Wouldn't it be better if we could do that afterwards, mm. after yeah. the World Cup's just changed everyone's perception? Co Coaches-wise then, um, Wayne Bennett, yep. again, the consistency yeah, of England. Yeah. Ian Watson, Mark's coach, who yeah. knows, Mark might even get yeah. a, a water boy role or something, or That'd be good, wouldn't it? might get Ian a shirt, signed shirt or something. Yeah. Might bring back to refer, to, I think, speaking about Salford, we've probably overachieved a little bit in terms of our budget. I'd probably say... The two smallest budget clubs are ourselves and London, and the yeah. fact that London have massively overachieved with, with the plays they've got, and probably ourselves as well. We're batting against the likes of Wigan and two points behind you guys when we get very modest crowds and we've not got the academy of you guys. So I think the fact that two British coaches like Danny Ward and Ian Watson yeah. have been chosen as, as assistants is, is great for the game over here. Is that a good blend? I, I enjoyed uh, I had Ian Watson when I was at Salford. He was the assistant then. Mm -hmm. I loved him as a coach. Um, so, yeah, I'm glad to see him, though. He's, he's a great bloke as well. I, I don't know much about the London coach, but I think it's just a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. Two English coaches, pro they could probably learn a lot off Wayne mm -hmm. and, you know, go back to their Super League clubs and, and improve them. Well, it's so important, Wilco, isn't it, to have that that right blend of coaches on a, on a tour when you're away? Yeah, and I think working with Wayne Bennett comes with its challenges. Um, I'd say, I'd say what Wayne's strength is is simplicity. Like yeah. he's a great communicator with guys. He's honest. He's straight. He's. But I'd say technically and tactically, he leans on other guys a mm. fair bit. You know. Um, so it'd be a really good challenging environment for young coaches to go and work with Wayne. Um, and Wayne's been around for that long. He, he's seen all of the fads and the jargon that comes in and out of the game. And I think that gives you a great perspective. And he uses his, like maybe his own language to describe what's going on. Uh, you know, I find that good. I find that with Brian McDermott, actually, at Toronto. He, he doesn't use jargon. You know, like terms we all use in the game. Yeah. You know, the, the different positions and running lines and tactics. He just, he's got his own way of describing it. And I quite like it. I think Wayne, Wayne, Bennett's, Wayne Bennett's a great guy because I've never known... Um, a group of players talk as positively yeah. as a coach when yeah. seems to be loved yeah, by the guys. Yeah. Well, Oliver Gildart, do the lines, the GB lines proud. Here's oh, your boy. shirt. <laughs> Wish it was that easy. Um, go, on, go pick it up from a garage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, be a nice little next six months for you, wouldn't it? Winning the grand final again, off on the GB lines tour. Yeah. Victory down under against New Zealand. We're going to have a sneaky little team. Are they? Really? Sneaky little Grand tip final winners GF. against Saints, maybe? Uh, well, no, I think, I think to get to the GF, I've just, I fancy him mm. coming good. I hope so. Mate, great to have you on. Thanks for having me. Come back and see us sometime soon. Definitely, yeah. And uh, I think you've turned Wilco's head, I think. Sleeve, Dolce Gabbana, shirt, D square. Let's take, let's take if, him to if, if I saw Don Wilco wearing that, <laughs> no. I would eat you know, all of your clothes. Why don't you try it on? No, it's not me, is it? Why don't you try it on? It's not me. Can we just put it on once? Just put it on once, please. I've got, got, yeah. got like a head like a pumpkin. It's not yeah, look down, look to the camera there. John Wilkin wow. wearing a D square. I think it's suits you. It's ridiculous. It looks ridiculous. Can we get all the close up on Oliver's hair. Uh, well. Absolutely. <laughs> <ridiculous. laughs> I'm more concerned about John Wilkin's eyes because he's had about five pints since we've done this, uh, <laughs> this podcast. Um, Brian McDermott, maybe he might be listening. Uh, it's very good being here with the, <laughs> the Northern, <laughs> the Northern uh, Monk. <laughs> we are back next week, every Monday until after the Grand Final, available for you to download from Tuesdays via iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. You can watch us on YouTube as well. Get in touch, social media, join the party at Super League and use the hashtag out of your league. We will see you soon. Hopefully. <laughs>